Good evening, church. I hope you're having an amazing week so far. I know it's been hot. I know there's been smoke out there. I know uh, we have had a few people sick. And man, it feels like just things are being kind of tested. And you know, a lot of still a lot of questions. A lot of the, a lot of people just kind of wonder what we should do next. And I know there's fires, so we want to make sure we're praying for our firefighters that are out fighting the fires for their safety, for their families that are at home. I know we have a handful of people here. Uh, some of the men are are out and away, and so we want to make sure we remember their families here and and them as well. Uh, we do have a few people that have been sick and have come down even with COVID here in church. And so they have not been here on Sundays. And so we always want to remind them, keep them in prayer. And if you're at home sick, you know, there's part of these things. Um, people have done a great job, I think, of if they're sick, not feeling well, staying home. But if you're home and you're by yourself, please let us know if you need some help. Uh, I don't want you to feel like you have to go through this alone. We can. There's a lot of us that have already been uh, been sick this year and been through it. And so we want to be able to help. And we want to, if, if you need anything, please let us know. We do want to come help you. And I want you to know that you don't have to go through this alone. Now, all that being said, uh, we have camp coming up next week, which we're really excited about. But today's reading plan, we were in Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Now this is the faith chapter, one of my favorite chapters. And, and it's so exciting to read and be encouraged by the faith of others. And, you know, when we read through this book, we, we see all these kind of heroes throughout here and people. And we were like, man, they, well, look at the faith they had. And in today's world, it feels like some of us, our faith is being tested. It's being put on. It's being put to the test. And, uh, and, and we find ourselves just being challenged by how strong is our faith. I had a friend tell me once that faith really is just trusting God enough to do what he says. And so I ask you what your faith is or how strong your faith is. Do you trust God enough to do what he says? And uh, as we read through this, um, hopefully if you're watching with a few people, feel free to stop anytime, but discuss some of, maybe some of the heroes that really encourage you and really uh, help you just, just cling to your faith and, and inspire you. And so here we go. Hebrews 11. Turn with me to Hebrews 11, your Bibles. If you have, if you're watching this by yourself, I always you know, encourage you take out a piece of paper and, and write down one or two verses that really stick out to you. And maybe you can do the same thing. Instead of sharing it with someone else, you just write it out and, and remind yourself of some of the people that have inspired you. And so if you're going through a tough time today, let's look at some of these examples. So here's what it says. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, for the conviction of things not seen, for by it the men of old gained approval. The men of old gain approval. Here we go. Trusting God enough to do what he says. Having your faith strong is a, your faith strong is a way to gain approval really from what God is doing what he's called us to do and doing what you're supposed to be doing. And for those of you, if you're if you're you know you're watching at home, keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Don't get discouraged. Keep going. Here we go. Verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God. So that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain, uh, through which he obtained the testimony that he was righteous, God testifying about his gifts, and through faith, though he is dead, he still speaks. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch was taken up so that he would not see death, and he was not found because God took him up, for, the, for he obtained the witness that before his being taken up, he was pleasing to God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Just fill that in. Without trusting God enough to do what he says, it's impossible to please God. We have to trust God enough to obey him. We talked about this last Sunday, you know, or a couple weeks ago about uh, perfection comes from obedience. And it's so important we learn uh, not to obey in a legalistic way, but we learn because we want to. God has called us to do we, ha we cannot operate in fear. So it says, for, and without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. By faith Noah, being warned by God about things not seen, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness, which is according to his faith. Can you imagine Noah? I think about this. Can you imagine Noah? He's like, 
Uh, okay, I have great faith in you, God. Okay, you want me to build a big boat? Why? Okay, you're going to send water from heaven. I've never seen that before. It hadn't rained before this time. And we're saying, you're going to send water from heaven. He trusted God enough to say, okay, I'm going to build this boat. Oh, you want it big. You want me to build a big boat. This ark. Okay, this is the dimensions. Why do I need one that big? And God says, I want you to trust me enough. I want you to trust me to follow my commands, to build this the way I've asked you to do. I have great plans for you. And sometimes I think the same thing comes with us is that God, you know, is, is our faith strong enough to say, well, hey, listen, this is where we've called you. We've been talking about this a lot the last few weeks about where is God calling you in this operation, in this time, in the body of Christ, and whether it's in the local church or, or in your community or at your work, what is God calling you to do? And are you willing to keep doing it? Are you willing to start doing it? Can you imagine the first time Noah starts building this boat and ark and people are gathering around. And he's like, oh yeah, it's going to rain. And God told me to do this. And they're like, sure he did. And they watched it. And, but his faith was so strong in the midst of everybody telling him what he was doing was wrong or didn't matter. He kept doing it. What a great encouragement. Um, okay, let's keep going. I don't want to get sidetracked here. <laughs> Verse 8 says, By faith Abraham, when he was called, obeyed by going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. How do you like that faith? I trust you enough, God. I don't know. We're going to, you said go out. All right. Well, wh where are we going? You know what? I'll show you when we get there. Okay, that's crazy faith. It says, By faith, verse 9, he lived as an alien in the land of promise. Uh, as in a foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, follow heirs of the same promise, a fellow heirs of the same promise, for he was looking for the city which had foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah herself received ability to conceive even beyond the proper time of life, since she considered him faithful who had promised. And here, talk about this belief. She was 90 when she conceived Isaac, right? 90. How many of you that are uh, in your 90s uh, would love to have a newborn baby or go through that stage of life? I'm only in my 40s. I'm like, you know what? Um, I'm glad we had our kids when we were young. Uh, had a lot more energy back then. <laughs> this is therefore, verse 12, there was born even of one man as him as good as dead, at that as many descendants as the stars in heaven in number and innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. All these died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them from a distance. And, okay, I don't want to spend much time on verse 13, but I want you to really begin to think of what that means. All of these died in faith without receiving the promises. We think about Abraham. He's like, yeah, he knew that he was, God said, you're, you're, you're descendants. Are he didn't see all the descendants that were going to come down the line. He didn't see, you know, the Davids and, and how Jesus one day would be born out of that. And, and all of the lineage, he didn't see all the nations and what was being born. And he didn't see that fulfilled promise. Same thing with Sarah. And we, you kind of go back and look through here and you're thinking, wow, these guys worked in faith without seeing the fruit. You know, it reminds me of when I did a uh, youth ministry. I love, I loved working with kids. One of the hardest part of youth ministries, and, and uh, bless your youth pastors, uh, they don't always see the fruit of their works. They, they, they pour so much time into the kids, and then they leave. And sometimes you hear back from them that, yeah, man, they've done great things. I get, I get the pleasure of doing another wedding for some of our old youth, uh, and, which I'm really excited about. But on the other hand, sometimes you, you, you don't always see the fruit of what you've put in. As a senior pastor, we can have people stay at church forever if they want, right? But as a youth pastor, they're only there for so long. You don't see all the seeds. And here they are. So it's like doing the work, having the faith, trusting God enough to do what he says without seeing the fruit and the promises. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get through this whole thing. Verse 14, for, uh, for those who say such things make it clear that they are seeking a country of their own. And indeed, if they had been thinking of that country from which they went out, they would have opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly place. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Verse 17, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, he offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. And it was he in whom it was said, in Isaac, your descendants shall be called. He considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type. 
By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, even regarding things to come. By faith Jacob, as he was dying, blessed each of his sons of Joseph, and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. Verse 22, By faith Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the exodus of the sons of Israel, and gave orders concerning his bones. I'm actually going to stop right there. Uh, you can guys can continue reading the rest of it, um, because this video is starting to get a little long. But I want to encourage you with this, by faith. Trusting God enough to do what he says. So many of these guys, what we see in what they did in faith, they did it not seeing the fulfilled promises, not seeing the final thing. And God has called us to do, God has called us to work for him. God has called, given all of us a calling. God has given each of us a purpose and a plan. And sometimes we don't always see the promises. Our promise, the, the reward, it's, it's really going to be in heaven when we get there. We're here on earth some 70, 80, 90, 100 years, and I've seen many people, and you probably know them too, that have died way too young. But listen, God has called us, and he wants us to keep doing the work, and he wants us to be inspired by some of these people that said, listen, I was willing to give up everything. I didn't know what was going to happen, and I think of Abraham, who God said, listen, I want you to, will you give me everything? Will you even give me your most precious uh, son? And Abraham believes that, listen, if God asks for my son, then I believe even if he does die, God will raise him up from the dead because he has given me the promise. I haven't seen the promise, but I believe that God has this promise for us. And I tell you, church, God has a promise for us. And uh, one day we're going to be with him uh, in heaven. One day we're going to have eternal life with him. One day we're going to be in by with no more pain, no more suffering, no more sorrow. But until then, we have to keep living in faith. I hope this blesses you a little bit today. Thank you for spending some time with me. Let's pray. I want to pray for those that are sick and, and pray for our firefighters as well. And so, uh, and, and for this heat. So Lord, we just thank you that we can come together and worship you, Father. We pray, we thank you for, Lord, the faith of some of these men and women, Lord, in the Bible and how it can just uh, bring us closer to you, God. I pray that you give us that faith, Lord, that we trust you enough to do what you said. You say, even without seeing uh, the full promise, Father, I pray that you give us glimpses of hope, Father, Lord, to keep us going, Lord. We pray for our firefighters, Lord, that are out there uh, fighting these fires. We're seeing the smoke come through here, Lord, and we pray for their safety, Lord, their wisdom, their guidance, your guidance on, on their lives, Father, as they work together, Lord. We pray for the families that are here, Lord, that you comfort them while uh, the firefighters are away. Father, we pray for this heat. I know it's hot. I pray that people's air conditioner keeps working, Lord. Their fans keep working, Lord, supernaturally. I pray that houses stay cool enough, Father, that you watch over people, uh, stay hydrated enough, Lord. Keep them safe, Father. And, and finally, Lord, we lift up those that are sick and not feeling well, God. We know that you can do great and mighty things. We pray for uh, their bodies to begin to recover. We pray for a healing touch right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We know the promises you have for us, Lord. And we're going to keep doing what you've called us to do, Lord. But I ask that you just bless us this week. Keep us safe. Give us an opportunity to share your love with someone else. Father, we ask all this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a great week. And we hope to see you all on Sunday. Talk to you later.